Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. Why can't I zoom in? Filming in 4K for this vlog, so the settings are a little bit different with things. There we go. There we go. Zooming in on those roots. Hello. I shouldn't even need to be watering this one right now. It has been misting. Why are you, why are you so dry? What's the problem? I've just been sitting outside enjoying the weather. It's like kind of cool out. It's misty, but like not enough to actually water the plants, which is fine. It's still refreshing and I'm enjoying it. I'm going to go to the pumpkin patch. Or not the pumpkin, apple. I'm going apple picking. Have some friends coming over. We're going to go pick some apples. I don't know how much what I'm going to vlog, but it'll, it'll be here. You'll see what I decide to vlog. And then uh, it's time to start fall prepping. Fun stuff, right? At least that's the plan for the week. I can't say for certain, but that's what should be going on. I'm going to put this pizza slice away. I'm so sick of looking at that thing. Now that I'm out here playing with the 4K option, I don't know how much I like it. This is as wide as it'll go, which is pretty good but it goes much, much, much more wide when I'm just in regular 1080, which I think 1080 is just fine for YouTube. During the videos during the week and I wanna get really nice, crisp, clean, well that actually, I mean, that looks pretty good. Maybe I should stick with it. How's the telephoto? Let's check that out real quick. I mean, it's decent, but still not as good as if I just film in 1080. I might be switching it out. It doesn't matter to y'all. Look at what I did. I threw the pizza right back on the ground. This is this is the problem here. I get distracted, gotta stay focused, gotta get cleaned up. And um, apple picking, let's go apple picking. Pretty fun, wasn't it? I had a good time. I actually didn't film much while I was there, and I don't. I know this isn't a super great shot, but look, it's just I like seeing those blades move around. Looks pretty neat. Yeah, like I said, though, I didn't film much while I was there, though. Just you know, a few little things. I am out here getting ready to prune the stuff out of this Chinese fan palm. Where are my snippers? Hey, there they are. I just did a little video on this plant somebody had asked me to, and I didn't realize that I actually hadn't talked much, or really at all, about the indoor care with the Chinese fan palm before, just kind of some things in other videos before, and a really old video about how to take care of them outside as like a dieback perennial, as a cold hardy plant, and uh, yeah, I thought I should go ahead and do that at someone's request, and now what I'm doing is starting to pull everything out of here. I will keep the crotons. I don't know if I'll keep them in here, but I do like to uh, make sure a few weeks before it's time to move the plants in to come through and start cleaning out the pots. The, I guess before I cut it up, I should talk about how things did in here. When I planted this up, I wasn't positive about the Iconia begonias because I, they've struggled in summers before, but they actually did pretty well. When things got really hot and intense out here, I uh, put a hibiscus in front of this, like the lower region, to help shade it a little bit, and that helped, but it made it so that the Creeping Jenny, which did very, very, very well with all the rain this year, it 
acclimated it to that shade. And then when I moved the hibiscus, it photooxidized a little bit, which is just fancy words for as the foliage started to bleach. That doesn't really matter though. Creeping Jenny is such a tough plant. I don't really care about that, especially since it's time to go ahead and start cutting all this stuff out and get things cleaned up and whatnot. Do need to be careful because I set this on top of my cheap little $5 metal table here and didn't really think much about, hey, is that safe? Nope, it's not safe, but did it anyways for the sake of that video, just so it'd be a little bit easier to film it at the right angles so the whole plant could be seen. But right now, I want to get all this stuff out of here. I like things to be nice and open so that there's more airflow around the plant when it's inside as a house plant. It just makes it easier, really, to take care of them. The begonia, depending on the variety, I'm not going to bother with the Iconia begonia. If it were like a dragon's wing or one of the like fancy types, I would just cut this back and I might leave it and let it stay, but I don't really anticipate this begonia doing well during the winter months in the house, so I'm just taking it out. Like I said, I like to get the stuff out of the plants so that I, one, there's more airflow, so you prevent crown rot from forming in the center, and it just makes things less attractive to pests. And that can make a really big difference when having things inside it makes them a little bit easier to care for. I'm going to miss out on a lot of the roots from this one. This Creeping Jenny can be a perennial where I live. And I mean, if you've been around for a while, you know I love Creeping Jenny. So that can stay. I'm going to set that right there for now. I should throw that right into water, but I'm going to finish up over here first. And I don't know uh, about the crotons. I could keep them in there. Remember, these were just little... Clarence Crotons I picked up last winter and ended up using them in this planter when I put it together in May and it was just like some sticks. And they really filled out and have done well, but I have so many Crotons. Do I bother with them? I don't know. What do you think? I'll go ahead and pull them and make sure I get a lot of roots with them and whatnot. And then maybe I'll just pot them up into something a little bit smaller. I think that would make a lot more sense. I don't really want to keep them in here with the Chinese fan palm because, well, like I just talked about, I want airflow. I want movement around the base of the plant. But those crotons, you know, those are perfectly healthy plants, so I don't really want to throw those away. I may even, that got wobbly, sorry. I may even end up using those in like a fall or Halloween plant or something of that sort of that nature. I don't know. We will see. I think I'm going to have to add a little bit of soil into this, but otherwise that's fairly cleaned up, at least for is cleaned up as I want it to be, need it to be. Yeah, I'd say that's a big improvement. Just getting that stuff out of there. I'm gonna cut the dead stuff out and time to start doing that with a lot of the plants. I'm just doing it with this one right now because I was just film, hello. There we go. Because I was just filming the video for it. So I figured since I have it out and up, I'd go ahead and do that. It's kind of a good representation, a good example of what I like to do with all the plants. I like to do it like probably two weeks before I move them in. The Chinese sand palms can take a decent amount of cold, so I won't be moving them in anytime soon. But like I said, just for example, this is kind of how I start to get things moving for fall prep, for moving them inside. And then once I have everything out of the pots, I like to go ahead and take a damp sponge, sometimes with a little bit of soap, just dipped in some soapy water and give the pot a quick little scrub and then a nice rinse. Just helps get all the accumulated soil and dust and everything off the sides so that when I take it in the house, I'm not taking all that dirt inside with me. Makes them look a little bit nicer, right? I mean, you gotta admit, that's a big improvement. Look at how nice and shiny that is. Just from a little bit of soapy water and a rinse, huge improvement. All right, so I've got these placed back over where they belong. I mean, the croton wasn't here before, but this is where I decided to put it. So it'll get like just a little bit of sun, but not too much. Cause you know, you just saw me yank it out of that pot. It has some rerouting to do. It's kind of an inside look at being able to see how I have things raised up over here. I don't normally like to put things that are super, super colorful in my Taravera pots because they're already so colorful. The Mexican pottery is so beautiful and vibrant. And because of that, I usually like to put something a little bit more muted in the top so that the pot stands out and vice versa, right? If you have a plant that you want to stand out, then putting it in something really vibrant, like something like this, maybe not the way to go. But I actually am really happy with that. I like that a lot. I think that looks really nice. It's a lot. It's very, very colorful, especially with, you know, there's 
clashing styles over here, I'm aware, but I'm fine with it. I've kind of come to a point in my life where I'm like, if I like it, I'm going to go with it. I don't really care if things go together to an extent. And like with this, when it was just this kind of concrete, faux concrete planter next to the blue pot, which fine, then you throw the um, colorful pot in right next to it. It does, it's, it's a lot, but I'm okay with it. And that's in part because it's not going to be for very long, right? I mean, by the time this vlog comes out, it's going to be almost October. And then I, I don't know when the frost is going to come this year. I have no idea. Used to be really easy to say, okay, like October 15th, somewhere around there. But you just never know anymore. Last year, I think it was October 16th, we dropped down to 28 degrees. It was only forecasted to be like 40 uh, but that didn't happen and killed a lot of plants in a lot of places. A lot of nurseries uh, were pretty upset. And <laughs> my backyard was very upset too. I lost some plants from that. And then I was scrolling through my Instagram when I was taking pictures of the Chinese fan palm and whatnot. Because I was like, did I do a post of this before? So I was scrolling back and I saw some pictures where there was like some snow and stuff. And I was like, oh, what was that from? It was from like November 6th. Which I remember being very perturbed last year because it was so unseasonably cold in uh, mid-October through November. And uh, I think I, I'm nervous that's going to happen again this year. That's why I'm trying to be more proactive. And uh, instead of like years in the past, I would wait until like mid-October to start getting the prep done. I can't really do that anymore. Not when I, you just don't know what the weather is going to do, right? I need to get ahead of the game. So that's kind of the point here, what I've been doing. I have, I've kind of sidetracked a little bit. I, I, oh, I forgot to talk about this. I put a little splint on my spindle palm frond. Every frond counts on a slow growing plant, right? So I've strapped some bamboo to it and it's working fine. I, I know it doesn't look good, but whatever, it'll do. The whole point's just that if it has chlorophyll, I'm keeping it because that they grow like snails, spindle palms. I have had spindle palms that have grown very quickly. I've had others that not so much. And this one is one of the not so much. It, it, this one's, oh, in no rush to grow at all. But I really, really, really said that weird. I want this spear in the middle to unfurl before it's time to move it because the more foliage that's in there, the more sturdy that crown is. And I don't, this is a soft trunk palm. And soft trunk palms, they can bruise easily and damage easily. It's easy to cause damage just from moving them around to a point that can kill them. It's, that's why some palms don't ship well. Like sable palms do not ship well. And that's partially because they have a soft heart, which is kind of a cute way to put it, right? But it's that soft heart, meaning the center of the plant, you know, palm hearts. That's what's going on in the middle that leads up to that spear. It bruises easily. So uh, while, like, you can throw them on a truck and throw them across a couple states, bringing them up too far north doesn't usually work out as far as longevity goes. And then when you combine that with the fact that when you cut the roots on a sable palm, the entire root dies, so they don't transplant very well either. I mean, they do, it's just a very, very, very slow process getting them up and going again. It's kind of an example here. Spindle palms aren't, they don't have like a super, super, super soft trunk, but it's not like a hard, super woody, uh, sturdy trunk like you would find on like maybe a Washingtonia, right? And can say the same thing with, like, the Adenidia palms. It's a softer trunk. Really, it's more smooth-trunked palms versus woody-trunked palms where they tend to just got to be a little bit more careful with them when things become delicate, meaning if the plant's stressed, dehydrated, or there's been a cold snap. Which is why I wanted to get on top of getting this guy moved over to where it's going to get more sun so that it doesn't stretch its foliage out too much. And uh, really just been watering it. I'm going to keep fertilizing this one even though it's time to stop. Because I'm moving them into a grow space. And if they're going into a grow space, then I don't really have to worry as much about them being uh, slowed down or hardened off. They're going to be moved into a space that's 80 degrees with a lot of grow lights on them. So I'm just not using like a full strength on the fertilizer. But I'm keeping it going because that, that frond needs to push out of there like now. Well, that was fun. I had no intention of talking about any of that, but that's just kind of the way things go sometimes. End of the vlog, just, you know, garden chats and rhymes and reasons behind things. These queen palms right here, I like them. You know, they'll do. The reason I like having queen palms in the backyard is because they can take a lot more cold. So, like, when I have to move the Adenidia palms in, which is going to be when temperatures are consistently dropping below 50, 
obviously if there's going to be any frost then i'll move them in and they can take temperatures in the 40s and whatnot but it needs to be warm again the next day they can even take a very 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 light frost but the temperatures need to be very warm right afterwards which isn't usually how things go here in the fall if we're having frost it's probably not gonna be like 80 degrees the next day but it can happen sometimes whereas the queen palms they can take it you know, they're not the most cold hardy palms, but they can take an awful lot of cold. There have been years where I didn't move my queen palms in until it was like, I think it dropped to like 19 degrees. And I was like, oh, okay, now it's time to bring them in. Because like 25 is kind of, you don't really want to go too much lower than that. And they defoliated, but they're queen palms. They grow like crazy, they throw out new foliage, and they were fine. I don't think I'm going to push these new ones that far, because one, they've never experienced the winter before. But um, I like having them because it's something to keep out in these pots probably hopefully through November. It just, I have no idea what the weather is going to be like this year. But typically that's how it would go. There have been years where they were out until like mid to late December. I just, I don't know what's going to happen. Same thing with the mule palms. They're nice and hardy so they can stay out for a long time. However, I have always wanted to have Edenidia palms in these palm pots and the pool pots that is. They're my favorite as far as just like a really nice tropical looking palm. These are the Edenidia palms. There's two there. There's another one over here that's <laughs> being hidden by the bird of paradise. But they're just so pretty. Having two Edenidia palms over here with triple trunks, I think would just be absolutely stunning. And there's part of me that's going, hey, maybe why not just do it? Just pull these guys out and drop the Edenidias in there just for a few weeks. I won't take my other pots. I'll just drop their pots in. May not look spectacular in that sense because they won't be underplanted. There's not going to be stuff growing out the bottoms of them, but it would give me an opportunity to be like, hey, I really love this and it's something I've always wanted to see out here. Just like, let summer go out with a bang, even though I technically, I know it's fall, right? But there's still a few weeks at least left here where the Adenidias will be okay outside and could get to enjoy them and see what that might look like. What do you think? I, I have no idea. It's going to be too late by the time you tell me. I think I'm going to do it. I don't know. We, we, I'm going I'm to think about it for a few minutes. I might do it. Oh my goodness, these are heavy. I <laughs> forgot how hard it was to get these into those pots. I went ahead and laid a towel down, which was the plan when I put these together anyways. I figured I would probably have to lay them on their side to get them out. But it's, oh my goodness. She heavy. Oh, wow. Welcome to one of the best decisions I've ever made. It's a little bit dramatic, but I like it. And it's... Maybe, possibly, just because the edges are so much more clean now on the sides of the pots, not having the potato vines and whatnot growing, which I just, if you've been around for a while, you know, I have a love-hate relationship with those sweet potato vines. I really love them. I like the contrast and color against the sides of the pots. I enjoy their vigor, but I also dislike their vigor at the same time. That comes with its own set of issues, right? But this, this just looks nice. It's nice and clean. I like the edges, and I really do like the way these blue pots, they blend together much better. Uh, ideally, if this were springtime, so a little bit of foreshadowing here, I am going to use the Adenidia palms in these pots next spring, and then the queens I have over here. We'll talk about that in a minute. What I was going to say with these Adenidia palms is that I will still underplant them just enough so that something grows over those edges. I need to scrub this pot a little bit better. I got to this one down here. Where we go? There it is. That one I got cleaned off. This one needs a little bit more of a scrubbing because there's some dead foliage on it. But so that the whole point is that the edge of the pot won't show anywhere near as drastically when there's something growing over it. But as it is, I still don't hate it. They go together much better than the other ones when the ones the queen palms were in because those were gray which still looks nice but they were raised up a lot bigger they're bigger palms they need bigger pots but just all in all this will look better the queen palms over here in this area this is where a big pine tree died off had the eastern white pine decline roots got messed up and there's just too much rain and everything it got blown around from the wind and then it's just non-stop rain like most of June, it seemed like, off and on, but it was just heavy, heavy downpours, drowned it. That's enough, you get it. So, lost a lot of privacy here, but the queen palms, this is, I don't mind this. Uh, I don't have them set up over here exactly how I want them to stay. That's partially because what I think I'm going to do is I need to get some stakes. There's a wall back here, which you can kind of see right there. 
and uh, I can put some stakes, some little stakes in the ground behind those, and then I can uh, put some string, some rope around those palms to help hold them up so they don't get blown around. That's why I still have the dolly here on that spindle palm because I don't want to get blown over and I haven't gotten around to putting stakes in the ground to help hold those up. So if they were, you know, put together <laughs> more appropriately, I just kind of toss them over there for now. There's a lot of cleanup and all this, a lot of soil and things were spilled. But the idea is that it's just, it's adding a little bit of privacy because until I get something else planted back there, that's just, it has been driving me crazy. I love my neighbors. I'm very blessed. I have really great neighbors, but I still like the privacy. So this helps a little bit with that. I can see this queen palm's kind of in that spruce a little bit. So I need to make some adjustments there. I want the foliage to be able to move around, but yeah, see method behind the madness and there's more. You may have been wondering, well, what about where the Adenidia palms were? Well, I need access to get back to all my orchids and everything. So for right now, I'm fine with those not being there. And uh, maybe next week, probably I'm going to get around to lifting these alacajas up, the alacaja luteas. I need to pull them out, get them potted up so that they're ready to go inside. Because they're not, I'm not taking these great big pots that they're in. Because the pots that they're in are absolutely massive. They weigh a ton. They stay out here all winter and I like throw some shrubs or something in them just to get through the fall and winter time. So it looks a little bit nice. I have some like hollies and things like that that I just pull out and I move behind the hot tub during the summer and then uh, fall comes around and I drop them in there. So I can put these luteas on each side of that fountain. And the same thing with the bird of paradise, they're potted. Remember if you've been around when I did this whole area over here, I didn't unpot those when I put them in. I just dropped them in with their pot and everything. Whereas the luteas were divisions. I divided those up and crammed them in on that adenidia palm, which I knew like, I was thinking like, okay, it's a little tight. I may regret that. It might be really hard to get them out. May not even be able to, I don't know, but I need to get them out because this big adenidia goes off to a greenhouse for winter storage, whereas the others go into my growth space in the garage for winter storage, need to get them rooted and, and so forth. You, you get what I'm saying? So it all works together. So even though it may have seemed like what just happened, this is very impulsive, not really. I've been thinking about doing this for quite a while. I do wish I had done it sooner, actually, because I really like how this looked. I thought it was gonna be much harder, much more difficult than it was to get those queen palms out of these pots, but it really, was not that bad. I just laid a towel down and pulled them out. So I uh, wish I had done it sooner, but hey, at least still have like three weeks, maybe a month at the absolute max to get to enjoy how these look out here and get a taste of what's going to be going on for next year, which that, that's what I'm the most thrilled about. Yeah, looks pretty good from in the house too, even though it's a little bit blurry because, you know, it's got, the, got some window problems. Talked about that last week. Look at how gigantic this flower is on this hedichium that is so big. I don't know how to just because it's too tall. Like I can't go even stand next to it. That's probably about 18 inches. It is a very, very, very tall, big bloom. The hummingbirds have been all over it. Oh, hey, Charlie. How you doing, bud? Okay, nice to see you too. Okay, I sort of pause there as if I'm waiting for the cat to reply to me. Yeah. Not how kitties work. Charlie doesn't come out for videos very often, though. You're always sleeping, aren't you, bud? No acknowledgement. It's nice to see you, too. These both are, like, watching me, like they're waiting for something. You got your food? You don't want your food? I don't know what to tell you. I think they get... Uh-oh. You didn't eat the lettuce again, did you? That clip from earlier, I have to sit on the floor now to feed the tortoise because... Someone keeps eating his lettuce and all of his tortoise pellets, so that's fun. I mean, it actually is kind of fun sitting around feeding a tortoise by hand. Can't really complain about that, but it takes a long time, as you can imagine, because, you know, it's a tortoise. They eat slowly. Um, look at these cute gourds I got while I was at the apple orchard. It's also a pumpkin patch. I'm doing any pumpkin picking a little bit. Too soon for that, but I thought this one, thought that one was really cool. How it stands up like that. I mean, almost <laughs> stands up on its own. They're just fun and colorful. I think this one's neat because it's, it looks like it's eating a pumpkin, doesn't it? Like the gourds wrapped itself around some other type of gourd. That's pretty cool. And then just 
normal gourd and then another one that's real ugly. I don't know why I like that one. You know, it's weird. I used to be like totally grossed out by gourds. I don't know what it is, but for some reason the past two years, like the uglier and more bumpy a pumpkin is or a squash, I'm like, yes, I must have the ugliest one I can find. And I don't actually think these are ugly either. I think they're quite pretty. I mean, that, that one's pretty ugly. The rest of them are pretty cool. I think this one, that one might be my favorite shape-wise because like what happened and then color wise that's just beautiful it's like a painting oh and i've gone ahead and embraced fall a little bit there's i'm bringing out some of the halloween decor got my little pumpkin guys back here and i have these cute little glass bead pumpkins that i've planned on using in like fairy garden type arrangements over the years and just never have never got around to it but i still think they look pretty neat in these guys they always make me smile because they got their arms out kind of like those uh wavy wacky crazy inflatable arm guys and they're just like woohoo party that would have been more appropriate when they were lighting up isn't that neat it's a bit extreme which was a little bit more of a slow fade but i still think they're happy they're cute and the i like the little light show they put on cute very interesting i don't think these have like a brand name or anything i don't even know what they're called sorry about that i remember that last year with my steam pumpkins steampunk pumpkins these guys a lot of people wanted to know like what they were called and i was like i don't really know they just had them at the store so but i did end up finding them on etsy i just googled like steampunk steampunk jack-o-lanterns i think is what i had googled that's where I'd found those, but I have a whole bunch of these guys. These are actually probably some of my favorite Halloween decorations. I don't know why. They just are. That's the thing with jack-o'-lanterns. They're just so stinking cute. I like a happy jack-o'-lantern. I don't like the sassy ones. Just like a big old dumb smile, and that's all it takes. I love them. And then I, that, that was an impulse buy, just because, you know, fall. Oh, and I have my little jack-o'-lantern coffee mug over here next to the onions and things i have an onion case <laughs> it fell back here and then it started to grow and i was like okay that works for me so that's my onion plant <laughs> it's just it's um been here for maybe like i don't know five months it can stay there until i need the pot i actually do need to take this pot then I have the other one that's over here, this white one. I need to take those outside and get them drilled. It's the only reason there's nothing in them right now, because I need to drill holes in them. I have my orchids in them when they bloom during the winter time, But um, it's kind of a pain pulling them in and out, because you don't want them sitting in water. So I need to get on top of that. I also need to turn these off. I don't want these batteries dying just yet. Because they run on those stupid little cell-type batteries. Which is convenient for little things, right? But a pain in the butt to replace so have to hold on they still need some time did this just turn into a halloween decor tour because i have so much more i haven't even gotten started yet oh and there's the crocodile ferns this one that one that's in the jar has been like the most thirsty fern i've ever had in my life next to maybe a maiden hair fern says so like you just you're gonna live in that jar until i get around to doing something else with you the others have been fine just that one very fussy, which is weird, because you'd think it'd be the same, but no, nope. That one right there, it's a diva. That's a diva fern, and diva ferns get to stay in the terrariums. For now. Anyways. Man, I need to polish this glass. I just polished this one, which I'd like to do something with. So pretty, isn't it? I think that's so lovely. Need to figure something out with that one. I don't, I don't, what just happened? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Total deviation. Although vlog that doesn't oh look at them they're in love okay that's enough of all of that so get back to more important things <laughs> there's no there's no important things tonight i don't know what i'm that's that's that made no sense i need to stop talking now <laughs> whoa 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 almost forgot isn't that cool my older sister got this for me got it for me as a present hello for my reflection that's uh from Home goods. It doesn't change colors on the inside. I guess they thought that it's already colorful enough, which I would say is true. But still, I mean, color changing lights, it's kind of the way to go. 
<laughs> I know I said I was stopping, but clearly that's not true. I also have these like fake branch things that when I set up for Halloween, I'll like incorporate those into what I'm doing. I have this one right here that's just like a root. These are actually aquarium decor, but they were on clearance and I was like, no, I would like these a lot for fall decoration or even planters. Yeah, that looks nice. It is an absolutely glorious day outside. Like, the temperature's perfect. I'm doing a repotting here. This is a variegated mandevilla. Sorry. Mandevilla. I always do that. Mandevillas and bougainvillas. I always call them mandevilla and bougainvillea. You put those two L's next to each other, and I'm just like, oh, yeah, that's a Y, not a L. Yeah, well, you get what I'm saying. So I've had this for quite some time, and the original plan with it was to put it down here and let it grow up this coach light. But the Vandas, these orchids, they really kind of liked being here. And I was like, that looks really cool there. There's a little bit of sun damage, which, you know, just kind of happens. I'm not on here to feign perfection. Sometimes you get spots on leaves. It's not the end of the world as long as it doesn't keep spreading. And we you know, that's just sun damage. It'll be cut off and whatnot. But look, I mean, seems happy. Because this one just finished blooming, like, maybe a month, maybe six weeks ago at the max. And it's doing it again. So they seem to be enjoying their life right there. I don't need to mess with that. And that's the story behind why I didn't end up potting this up. But I like it a lot. It's not, you know, I don't want to be wasteful. I'm not going to throw it away. So I do want to overwinter it. But this is, that has to get repotted. This thing, that pot's way too small. I'm going to have to water this constantly. So I'm just bumping it up a size. There were, I think this had like a hearty hibiscus in it. Something like that that's over in the garden now. And just, you know, you get it. I'm going to put the thing in the thing and then put more things in the things and get the water on the thing. And, and that's how you garden. <laughs> during a care video that would be out during the week, I can't shut myself up. But then in a vlog, I'm just like, yeah, you know, just stick your plant in some soil. It'll be fine. No, not really. Mandevillas, they like a really nice, rich soil that drains fast. Shouldn't hold on to moisture for too long. And um, I'm going to be putting some Espoma Biotone in here. I like to get it kind of where it's like 50% and I'll top dress it a little bit and then this is going to be where I keep this in the winter time I'll just keep it in this pot I do need to change out this arbor and that's why I had this over here in this bucket because I was thinking I could soak the vining part in the water and it would be easier to get that off of here without damaging it but it just it floated so that's all right she didn't have to swim. That's fine. You don't, You do you. It's okay. Because, yeah, if I had kept this in this tiny pot all winter, I would have had to have just watered it nonstop. That wouldn't work out well. And I, like I said, I really like this vine. The variegated foliage is so pretty. It does scorch a little bit. So that's one thing with this. You know, the more sun you give a mandevilla, then typically the more floriferous they will be with their flowers. But can't really do that with this variegated one or else it kind of cooks a little bit so it hasn't been the most floriferous because of that but there are things you can do like um adding some epsom salt and stuff to soil with variegated plants sometimes can help with that with um uh the, <laughs> protecting the foliage is what i'm trying to say but that's not something i have to worry about this time of year luckily go ahead and water this in burp the soil that's what i call it burping the soil that initial watering and the bubbles and things come up and you usually have to add a little bit more so that's what I'm doing. Look at how well that's draining, though. That good, sharp drainage. I like to see that. Oh, yeah, she's pretty. Burnt leaves and all. Still a pretty plant. See why I'm like, I gotta hold on to this. I don't think it's a super rare plant or anything like that. I just, I haven't seen the variegated mandevillas for sale anywhere around here before. And the nursery just had the one, so like, I'm gonna get it. It was kind of pricey. I think it was like $18.99, $16.99, which is the... For this little guy, I was like, that seems extreme, but I'm into that foliage. But I hadn't really taken into account at the time the fact that, like, these like a lot of sun to bloom a lot. And then you can't really do that with variegated foliage all the time. Depends on the plant, but it's still pretty, even if it doesn't bloom a lot. Now, I have to say, everyone out there who's been watching and commenting on my last few videos, I just want to put out a really big thank you. People have been so kind. 
Not that that's like terribly unusual. Generally, I'd say like 95 to 98 percent of the comments are usually very kind, but it's just like been extra lately, and it means a lot to me. I thank you. I'm sure a lot of you out there who watch a lot of the videos here on YouTube and the plant community, what it just fell out of the tree? Ew! Just like a giant glob of what is? Oh, it's bird poop. Okay, just had to go inside and wash my hands and my legs. The bird just pooped on me. That's <laughs> why. Anyways, as I was saying, people out there, some of y'all, you know, you watch a lot of the videos in the plant community and you know what's like what happened with Kaylee Ellen and um, and the Planty Kindness Project, which was started by Pam's Planty Things here on YouTube. And she's on Instagram. I suggest check her out and people have been making videos and talking about their experiences with the trolls and how they deal with those things and what they would like to do to inspire or just to make a positive difference in people's lives. And I think that that is just so awesome and just a really cool way for people to put themselves out there, right? I've talked about on my channel multiple, what's happening, get it together, what's going on, what's happening? Camera overheated. Am I not meant to talk about this? What's going on? Anyways, I've talked about the troll situation and the bullying and whatnot here on my channel before. Something that I've kind of unfortunately had to get used to. There's not very much of it for the most part. Everybody is just so kind and so warm and loving and I and that means the world to me. Thank you. And most of the trolling rude comments for the most part are things I just kind of roll my eyes at at this point. We've like over 500 videos in here on the channel. So, you know, you, you adjust after a while. Hopefully. I mean, not everybody. Which is still messed up, right? You shouldn't have to adjust to something like that. But unfortunately, it just kind of seems to come with the territory. It is one of those things where it seems to kind of come in waves. It's like everything's nice and warm and positive, And then all of a sudden, one day, it's like the haters just come out full-fledged into the comments and that'll like last for a few days. I don't know what that's about, that's just a pattern I've noticed, like, and it's not usually the day a video comes out either, it's normally like a couple days later. I don't know why that is. And I do think that sometimes, not often, but sometimes, I'm not trying to defend any trolls out there, but I do think that sometimes maybe people don't realize how little it takes in a comment for it to be bothersome to a creator. Like, have y'all ever seen Office Space? I haven't seen it in years, but I remember there was a scene in there where he was talking about his bosses and he was like, you know, you have one boss, that's, that's it. So you do something wrong, one person is on top of you for it. And then he was like, I have, I don't remember how many, like four or five people. So every time something goes wrong, he has four or five people who are talking about it. That's kind of how the comment section is sometimes. It's like, okay, if you misstep, you're going to be hearing about it, like, as long as the video's up, potentially. And that can put a lot of pressure on people, on myself as well. You know, there are certain things I just don't talk about. That's because I have learned that there are certain sections of the uh, plant community where the, the, it, it's just nobody knows anything except for the people in the comments. I'm not going to go into that territory, but yeah, there's just some plants and topics. I'm just like, yeah, I'm gonna stay away from that for now. And sometimes there are things that like I can't even talk about, but you may have noticed that I don't show my front yard anymore. I'm not gonna say anything else about that, but that I may not be able to from now on. I think it would give attention to uh, people who shouldn't be getting it. So, you know, that just is what it is. Maybe I'll figure out a way to film with like just close-ups out there in the future. I don't know. I've had to increase security and I have like signs all over the place now, which are ugly, you know, it, but it's just stuff like that can get very frustrating. <laughs> Sometimes there's a lack of boundaries. I think that's what I'm getting at. And accountability. That's one area that myself and I know a lot of creators on here struggle with because the norm with haters and trolls and things like that is to don't give them attention. Don't let it bother you. Don't respond and all of those things. However, I have noticed that most of the time when I do respond to someone who's being very unkind, usually those comments get deleted. And I think that that's because people who go around saying horrible things on people's videos don't usually expect a reply because there's like no accountability on the internet. And so, but you gotta pick and choose your battles. That would be exhausting, right? If every single time somebody 
is rude to make sure you reply and tell them they should be ashamed of themselves. It, that's just no way to live life. So it's a case-by-case -case basis. I'll block people. I haven't had to block a ton, but I will if someone's going through to like all of my videos saying the same thing every single time. And get a why, fun, why are you here? And two, go away. <laughs> Doesn't make sense to me. And I have, no, well, I'm not going to talk about that. I was watching a video by Rylan Adams the other day, and he was in his kitchen cooking Shane, his fiance, I believe, dinner. And he turned on the under cabinet lighting, and he goes, ugh, but it's yellow. Do you need more light? There you go. Oh, but I can put on, ooh, you know what? There's under lights as well. But look, it, it really makes me go crazy because they're ooh. yellow. They're yellow. Dude. At what? That had to be a mistake. Had to have been. Nobody wants, I mean, uh, I'm very thankful to have lights under our shelving, but. Oh, thank yeah. God you said that. <laughs> yeah, wait, was that like a, I don't want a problem? I don't know, people. Like, I don't want the light community to cancel. <laughs> I'm serious, you never know nowadays. I feel like I can't say anything with people being yes, mad at me. The tungsten squad. <laughs> Which is funny, but sadly, very true. That's actually something I really enjoy about the vlogs and hate about them at the same time. I, the vlogs are, I really like doing the vlogs on this channel. They're just once a week. They tend to be rather long, but it's laid back time. It's just like, let's just chill, not take life so seriously. Yeah, maybe I'm gonna show off some plants that have some bad foliage. It happens, that's the reality of gardening. There's something very peaceful about that. I don't know what it is. The videos during the week I love making, where it's more like maybe putting together a planter or a care video, something like that that has a more rigid format. It's appropriately rigid. I think it needs to be that way for care type videos, but with the vlogs, it's like, let's just let loose and chill. And sometimes, you know, could get a little bit redundant. Sometimes the hand can be a bit much. I've gotten, th those are the types of comments though, when people complain about the hands where I used to get upset about it. And I'm like, I've looked back at some of those videos from like a year ago. I'm like, oh yeah, that was a bit much. You know, th the delivery, the way people say things makes the biggest difference. You don't have to be a jerk about it. I hadn't really realized like that this, you know, this is very distracting and to calm it down a little bit. <laughs> it's a hard habit to break and it still happens sometimes. Usually, like I've said before, it just means I'm really feeling myself if the hands are flying all over the place. So sometimes things like that can be helpful. Like I said, a lot of it's about delivery. Now, yeah, for the most part, like I said though, everybody's lovely over here and I really appreciate y'all. So, and what Kaylee had to deal with, if you watched her video in Spiritus Gate and the Plenty Kindness Project, that was like cancel culture. And that's a different thing to have to deal with. I've never had to deal with it to that level. I don't, my channel's much smaller. I'm like pushing 15,000 right now, I think. And I appreciate every single one of y'all. Thank you. Thank you for being here and being part of the plant fam. I appreciate you. So when I've had to deal with things like that, it's usually like a care video. And then someone's like, well, this is, should be called how you kill the plant. And I'm like, well, if you know everything, why are you here? That's always fascinated me. If you know everything about taking care of the plant, what are you doing here? And also you gotta say why. If you want me to take you seriously, you need to, th things need to be constructive. If I said something wrong, let me know so I can correct it. But I'm not feigning perfection over here. Absolutely not. If there's a mess, I'll show it. I screw up, I'll talk about it. It's fine. I'm human and I have no issue with that. But yeah, that's what I was saying about the vlogs before. What I was trying to get at is that it's just, it's so much more laid back and I feel so comfortable just being my sloppy self with everybody and think that's a bit extreme. I don't know if I'd say I'm really sloppy, but like I said, Sometimes you got broken leaves. Sometimes you got yellow leaves. Sometimes you spilled dirt on the ground. This is just kind of part of it. So in the vlogs, I just get to go with the flow. And whereas in the weekly videos I do, I have started to try and like keep things looking a little bit more tidy because it just looks a lot more nice, don't you think? I think it does. But that sort of thing, not really practical for videos that might be 30 minutes to an hour long. Like I, you just, you can't do it. That's too much. At least for me, Things gotta stay fun and laid back. And I have a reason for that. It's not just like the way it, it makes me feel, but if you remember a few months ago when I had been talking about the trolls and things like that, about how sometimes it would get frustrating because it just feels like sometimes you can't say anything without people coming for you, I have kind of moved on from that. And it took me a little while. This is all after what happened in El Paso, by the way. So that's what was on my mind at the time and for several weeks 
after, and I mean still now even, but I had been saying that there's just a lot I wish I could say, but I'm not going to. Anyways, that's not really the point. The point was that in that video, so many of you were very reassuring. And you're like, you know what, talk about what you want to, it's okay. And then people are like, you know, I'd rather you don't, which is fine too. And I had even thought about maybe setting up a separate channel where it's like not really plants and just anything, just life. The problem is during the winter months, that's pretty much how the vlogs are though, because I can't put out videos during the week about plants and still have content for the weekends for vlogs. So the vlogs are in the winter time. It's just like whatever's going on in life. We'll see the plants and everything in the grow space, but it's not things like this, like repotting things and whatnot all the time. It, things have to go a different direction. So I was like, you know, I don't really want to set up another channel. The reason I decided to not do that, I actually, I, for some reason, get choked up every time I've tried to film this. Um, over the years, there have been uh, so many kind people who've reached out to me and talked to me about things that they've struggled with. I'm not gonna get specifics. I'm not trying to blow up anyone's spot. And how much they've enjoyed just the positiveness and the happiness and the just laid back relaxing time that they feel when they watch these videos. I remember things like that, which are very important and I try to keep in mind all the time. You know, reality can be a drag, right? There's a lot going on in the world. And um, that's not what people are here for. And I'm fine with that. It, for a little bit, I was like, I need to break out a little bit more and talk about some other things and try and make things a little bit more deep, which I'm doing right now. And I will do another video. And, you know, it comes here and there. But I still just, if there is anything anyone could ever take from my channel, I want people to feel good when they're done watching my videos. No other objective. So it's become important to me to try and maintain that, which isn't hard. I love doing it. It's good for me too, you know? I have uh, dealt with anxiety before, and uh, why why spew that out to the world? Not, and there's nothing wrong with channels who are doing that. I've come to learn that that's not what y'all are here for, and uh, I'm good with that. I think that's a good thing. That doesn't mean things will be controversy-free, because like I said, sometimes it's like no matter what you say, someone might get offended. I remember a few months ago in a vlog, there is a hibiscus that had turned orange and it was called Mr. President, and I just thought that was hilarious. But, oh, let me tell you, there were a lot of people who did not. They thought it was very disrespectful that I laughed about that, because the Mr. President hibiscus is typically red, and it had just faded to orange. It's funny. Everybody lighten up. It's not a big deal. That's not even taking a political stance, but I got a lot of backlash. Like, let's not talk politics. I'm like, doesn't matter your affiliation. Everybody laughs about stuff like that. And just bringing it up again <laughs> may have been a problem, but I've come to a point where I know you just can't please everyone. And so I just gotta be myself. So that's what I have learned doing the YouTube thing over the years. It's a roller coaster sometimes. The comments don't bother me, sometimes they do. More often than not, I don't really care anymore, unless it's constructive, or um, for the most part, a lot of it's just little things, like someone doesn't like the voice, the hands, and blah, blah. you talk too much, that's when I get the most, you talk too much. I'm like, but, 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 okay, here we go. Was that fun for you? I thought it was pretty boring. What you doing on YouTube? You don't want to hear people talk. <laughs> get out of here. That's how you gain new subscribers. Tell everybody to go away. It's not what I mean at all. To each his own. It's fine. Like I said, it's about delivery. There's no reason to be unkind. It doesn't really hold any value. It's not productive. And for the most part, I don't really have to deal with it very much anymore. And I'm thinking that people are really realizing that being positive in the comment section makes such a tremendous massive difference to the creators. I, it really, it helps keep things moving. It really does. I mean, even for the creators who maybe just don't care and it's not a big deal to them, it still makes a difference. It makes a difference in everyone's day. So yeah, that's been my experience <laughs> in relation to the Planty Kindness project and the trolls and the haters and just Kind of some of my thoughts and perspectives on things. Like I said, if there's anything I ever want anybody to take from this channel, it's to watch a video and be in a good mood when they're done. Maybe they're inspired, reassured, just overall just feel relaxed. That's that's what I'm going for. This view would be so much better if there were clouds in the sky. I'm laying on my back right now.
and it's incredibly uncomfortable. Anyone else's allergy has been real bad lately? I am like so congested right now. I mean, I know my voice is always nasally. <laughs> How can I forget? Thanks to the comment section. His voice is so annoying. I'm unsubscribing. Really? Okay. Thoughts on that one? Because that's probably the most common one. One, I don't care. I don't know you. Two, if you're nasty like that, why would I want you around? Bye bye I'm okay with that. I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to alter my voice. I mean, I'd like to see anybody else do that. There are vocal lessons and things like that you can do, but why would I? This is me, and the, you, like it or not, I'm not changing it. Not my voice, I mean, come on, that's stupid. It's like when people say they're unsubscribing and they think that that's gonna bother you, it might bother some people. To me, I'm like, if you are someone who's talking to people like that, I don't really think I want you around. Just unsubscribe, you ain't gotta be a jerk about it. Most of y'all are real cute though. I'll tell you why in just a minute, but first, uh, check out Pam's Planty Things and the other Planty Kindness Project videos and I think that it's a great movement. Let's talk about keeping things positive. And it, I know it's, it's the way I did it's maybe a little bit contradictory because first it's like there's a little bit of venting, a little bit of here's my experience and what I think about it, and then uh, what I feel my purpose is and what I enjoy doing, which is I just I just want people to be happy. That's it. Pretty simple. For me anyways. You know, if I were to just break it down into a nutshell, a uh, like 20 minute <laughs> nutshell, however long this has been. But the reason y'all are cute isn't just because most of y'all are so incredibly nice. The comments have just been fabulous lately. Been so nice. But, um, I get, I get so many questions on Instagram, which I'm not complaining about. I'm totally happy helping people with their plants. But a lot of them, a lot lately, are people worried about their plant when they see spots on the leaves. And th that's good. You need to notice those things. Sometimes it's just wear and tear. You know, these weren't a suitcase not too long ago, a few months ago. So that just happens. Just like our skin bruises, uh, that happens, you know, that's stressed to the tissue. Same thing happens with a plant. But typically, when the bruise is done on a plant, it just leaves behind dead brown patches. Sometimes, though, it is something to look into, you know. If it's miscolored, think, see how red this is? If I start seeing this moving all the way down, then that's when I want to start looking into bacterial or fungal issues. I've moved this one into a little bit more sun. It was back in the dark. The drippers were hitting it a lot, and it's just, I think that that has a lot to do with what's going on there. But to be safe, I'm moving it out, and ideally it wouldn't be surrounded by other plants, right? But, you know, when there's redness and things like that, it's a complicated subject. But usually it's just people who love their plants so much that they're worried, and you may as well ask, right? Just to be safe. I, I appreciate that. I can appreciate that kind of passion. That's why some of my videos do tend to be kind of long. The vlogs are just, it just depends on how much I'm talking. Like this is probably going to be a long one, which isn't smart because it's in 4K. So it's going to take a long time to upload it. So if this video doesn't come out till Sunday or late Saturday night, I apologize. <laughs> but it's when uh, the care videos get kind of long. It's because I just, I've realized that I need to assume that maybe the person who looked up that particular plant, like the Chinese fan palm, may have never grown a plant before in their life. So uh, I don't want to keep it really, really short because there's usually a lot to talk about if you're keeping that in mind and taking that into consideration, right? And uh, that's why it means so much to me when uh, those of you who, you know, because I remember, we remember the people who comment a lot and a lot of you have been around for a long time. And uh, it means a lot when people are still watching those videos and not, and not taking issue with the length and the redundancy, because a lot of redundancy comes along with assuming that maybe someone who's watching a care video knows nothing about a house plant. It gets repetitive, very repetitive, like me saying redundant and repetitive over and over and over again. I have actually thought about maybe doing a series, I have to make this quick because I just realized the little number on the bottom of my <laughs> screen here is how much time I have left, which is three minutes. So I'm gonna have to figure something else out there. Oh, but I did want to show you the cordelins before I go, the harlequins, or fruticasas, but they are the harlequin. Cordelin, fruticosa, harlequin is a variety. Look at how well those are coloring up. When I did the video on the fruticosas, I did talk about how in the fall time, the color tends to come back to them. And sometimes midsummer when things are really hot, they're not as colorful. And look at her, so pretty, so, you don't have to be a girl, by the way. You, you can be a boy or whatever you want to be. But just look at how absolutely beautiful 
the new foliage is coming in and it's just going to get lighter and lighter and lighter. There will be more hints of white and everything in the new growth that comes out of there. I'm really excited about that. And these are two plants I need to pull also. I'm not going to leave these in with the Robolini palm during the winter time. So I need to do that. This begonia has gotten so big. One, totally choked out that petunia, but you can't even see the pot under there anymore. That was a 30 inch pot. This thing's just absolutely massive. Those are pretty easy to overwinter. I'm probably going to pull a few of the begonias and bring them in. That'll happen next week. That's, I'll do that when I do the alocasias. I won't bring them in, but I'll pull them and maybe we can talk about like winter care and stuff like that. Cause yeah, they're getting really big. Oh, look at how big, I forgot to talk about this in the last garden tour. That frog in a blender caladium, hate the name, but that foliage is just so cool, isn't it? It's gotten nice and big and every single leaf, totally unique, which I mean, that's how things grow with variegated plants, right? But so pretty. I think it might be one of my favorite caladiums. I and mean, there's some really cool ones out there, but this one's like, just it has a special place in my heart, except for the name. The name, I don't like it. That's so mean. Be sticking frogs in blenders. That shouldn't even be a thing. It shouldn't, well, I don't think it's a thing. You know what I'm saying. So again, uh, I want to thank everybody. I feel like I have a really, really great group of subscribers and people who comment on the videos. I really appreciate it. And just thank you. Thank you so much for your kindness, your positivity. It helps motivate me. It helps brighten my day. Hopefully these videos help do the same to you. That's, that's the whole point here with the vlogs. It's hangout time, right? So yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I really do appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all. Oh, speaking of awesome people, look who's in bloom. Kathy. It's, this one's called Chatty Kathy, but it, Kathy, you see it? Oh, she's so pretty. Okay, hope everybody's doing well. This banana's just gotten gigantic. I hope everybody's doing well. I say it multiple times because I mean it. I will be posting updates with things maybe that don't make it into the vlog or maybe some things I had to cut out of the vlog on my social media, which is linked down below. I'm on Instagram like way more than anything else. And it... Uh, Hopefully nobody took it the wrong way. Feel free anytime you can hit me up with any questions. I have no issues answering anything. It's a pleasure. The only dumb question is the question you don't ask, right? <laughs> That's not true. I'm kidding, of course. Just joking around. All right, and y'all know the routine, right? YouTube, you could like the video. It makes a huge difference for the channels and for the videos, and it makes a big difference. I appreciate it. So thank you, and subscribe as well. Hit the notification bell, because I upload multiple times a week, and that way you'll know when new videos come out. And I hope everybody's having a great day, great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.